Hello everyone. I wanted to talk to you about something today that has been a real focus of mine over the last while. Hormone health. Now, if you are a young woman, teenager um, or over or older, I should say, um, listen to this because I want to give you information that at some point in your life, is really going to be helpful. If you were older and um, in your 20s, 30s, and if you're like me, you're in your 40s and you might be experiencing what I'm experiencing, um, ex especially in your 40s. It's called perimenopause. <laughs> now, it's kind of weird to even think about that term because in my 40s, I'm thinking to myself, I there's no possible way I can be going into perimenopause because I'm young. But you know what? It happens. And there are some signs that I've been having that have been really letting me know that this is what's going on. So here's the thing. Um, and you know what? And if you're a man or you think that... Um, one of your, if you're a woman and you think a, your partner can benefit from this, honestly, this is really good for them to watch too, because here's the thing. Um, I've educated my whole family. <laughs> I said to my boys who are 20 and 17, I said, look, do you, you know, you are going to have women in your life for the rest of your life. You have a responsibility and the responsibility is to understand what women go through and really accept the totality of a woman. And that is her feminine cycles, her menstrual cycles, all of the different things that happen. So today I want to just briefly talk to you about what I've been going through. Now, I am not going to go into great depth about it because I will go and do some IGTVs as I go. Um, but this initial one is is the one that I think I just wanted to sort of give you an overview of what's been going on. So on May 18th, um, well, oh, actually March and April, I skipped my period and I was like, okay, this is weird. This is crazy, crazy. But then I got a period on March 18th, no, May 18th. And guess what? I still have it. <laughs> so Yes, this is why I have been a little bit quiet. This is why we've been really um, going back in our archives and talking about the last, th you know, 30 shows that we've done. Because I think right now for me, I need to have the space and the time to sort of collect myself and really learn about what this really means for me. Now, you know, I let, I let it, the irregular bleeding, what I thought was just a really long period. I let it go for about 18 days. And then I thought, okay, we got to, we got to get some, some help. So I went to my naturopath, my favorite one. And she and I spent a lot of time talking and we were going over things and working some things out. Um, I'd also been in touch with my medical doctor and it took a little bit to get um, an appointment and to get in. Um, so the medical doctor was always in my uh, view, but a lot of times it takes weeks to get in. So I was just waiting. Anyway, I, don't, I can't remember what exact day it was. It was probably in the day 40s where I got in to see my medical doctor. And of course, with COVID happening, they don't, they don't um, have you come into the office. You're, you're, you're doing the telecalls. So I did a telecall um, and it turned out that my doctor was gone on vacation. So he brought in this really fabulous woman and she was um, there on his behalf. I, she and I talked and we did a, you know, we did a blood test and we did um, to just to see what's, what's going on. So she gave me a blood test and she also gave me a requisition for an ultrasound because you want to know what's going on. Well, um, I was just, honestly, if, 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 if you can relate, 
as a woman, you, you will know that the next thing I'm going to tell you is this irregular bleeding is nothing that I'm familiar with. It was clots, like clots. But if you were to take a piece of toilet paper and put like the clot, scoop it and put it on there, it wasn't hard. It was just more like clotty and a lot of blood. So my hemoglobin was normal. My ferritin levels are super low. My um, iron is low as well, but nothing in terms of hemoglobin that would be concerning anybody. So they, um, a couple Mondays ago, I actually had to go to Emerge because I could not leave the washroom for hours. It was just, I'd, I'd make it down halfway down the hall and I have to turn around and go back and clots and blood. And it was just like really, really disconcerting. So I went to the ER and they did an emergency ultrasound there. And, um, and then I had an appointment with a gynecologist um, scheduled for the f a few days later. And here's the thing. Um, I have some fibroids. I have some cysts. I have polyps. I have um, a thickening of my endometrial lining. So the uterine wall is becoming thick. Now for women who are younger, um, I was talking with Amber Lee about this because she has PCOS and she also has some menstrual issues. And I just, I think this is an important conversation for us all to have as women, because I am nowhere uh, in no way saying that you as young women are going to have this. What I am saying is, you might. And if you do, I have learned some things that are really, really important in, in getting my mental state and my body and my wellness in line with my hormone. So these next IGTVs, we're gonna be all about different topics around that. But this particular time um, for the overview you'll hear some things and you'll maybe think oh I, I really wanted to talk about that and I will we'll just get into detail uh, greater detail later but um, so I had this thing called endometrial hyperplasia and that's just where it just the wall keeps shedding and it just it isn't stopping it's just hyper and I have an absence of progesterone in my body. So I'm really estrogen dominant and I'm, I have low progesterone. So um, they looked at the results of my ultrasound and all that. And my gynecologist phoned me and we did a telehealth call. And she said, yeah, you know what? You, you have something that's really normal. And I was like, this is normal? And she said, yeah, a lot of women have that. And I, w I thought to myself, I don't know anybody that has this kind of bleeding. I have friends spanning all ages and no one's ever told me about this. And then it got me thinking, maybe we're not talking about this. So this is why I'm doing this because I am, I am in the middle of this and I am talking. I am talking to my 10 year old about it. I'm talking to my 21 year old about it. I'm talking to my boyfriend's girlfriend or my son's girlfriends about that. I don't have a boyfriend. I have a husband and a partner, um, but I'm talking to him about that for 25 years. He's been my guy and uh, he's seen it all. And he said to me last night, I, I have not seen it all. This, this is crazy. The amount of blood is, is that over 75 days has been incredible. And we can't seem to stop this flow. So there are some things that maybe you will not understand or maybe that you'll be thinking about, but again, we'll unpack it. So some of the things that I was led to is um, my thoughts about self-care, my thoughts about um, what is my body saying? If I'm, in, if I'm listening to my body, if it's bleeding, what is it saying to me? How does the body express itself in physical form, it, it, it has a reaction. And so then you 
um, maybe think, oh, okay, why is my body doing that? But if you just stop and think and reflect on your body and you say, what is it that you're saying? Sometimes the body talks to you, um, but you got to kind of be thinking about that and open to the idea that we are not separate from our body, that my, my experiences of, that have happened to me, my thoughts, the way I talk to myself, the, the self-compassion that I see the, myself in is really reflected in the cells of my body. And that is why I really want to make sure that if you are a young woman that you keep watching this and that if you are a man that you listen to this because you probably have a woman in your life and perhaps she's going to have maybe something like this happen or, or, or she is. And this conversation needs to be talked about. So 75 days. I talked to my gynecologist and she said, listen, you know what? This is common. Like, um, it's, it is very on your body is really on. It's showing itself as like, oh, I'm here. I'm going to bleed. And it has been proving itself and I've been listening. So I want to talk about that later. Um, but right now, um, the last part of this is that um, I went, I, I called my doctor. She said, listen, you're gonna take this thing called uh, medroxyprogesterone acetate. So I took that and I took that just before I went on my vacation um, with my family. And she said, you know what, it's, it's gonna help. Well, it helped-ish. So it helped, sort of. It took the clotting away but it didn't take the bleeding away. I mean, it reduced the bleeding, but it didn't take it away. In fact, one day it took it away and then it came back. And this is only, this is a really, really high dose of progesterone. So she, I took it and my body was like ravenous for it. Of course, I limited myself to one pill a day. And you know what I did with it? I put it under my tongue and I let it um, just dissolve. And sometimes when it get really gross, that chalky feeling, I'd put a little bit of water on, in my mouth and just let it sit there. I wanted maximum absorption and I didn't want to just swallow it. And I was thinking, how do I get this, um, this medication into my body immediately? <laughs> and the way I thought is, um, to just dissolve it in my mouth. And, and so I think that's a really good form for, especially for birth control. I told my daughter, like, look, don't swallow the pill, just take it and put it under your tongue and let it just dissolve. And that way it will, it will go quickly into your system. So I took that for 10 days. And then on the last Friday, I went off of it because I didn't have any left. And guess what? Um, bleeding and clots came back and came back with a vengeance to the point where um, here we are today. Um, I haven't been able to leave the house in three days. I am a mess. I go through, I am exhausted, like absolutely exhausted. And, and what's interesting is that my hemoglobin levels are normal. So it isn't raising a red flag for the doctors to say, oh, hey, you know, you're, you're losing so much blood that you are losing, um, your hemoglobin numbers are affected. But it is something that um, I'm just generally exhausted. And anyway, I, today I called my doctor and she so kindly, um, called me back and said, you know what, here's what we're going to do. I'm going tomorrow morning, which is Thursday, no, Thursday afternoon for, um, endometrial biopsy. It's where they go up and through the vagina into the cervix and they take a little piece of your endometrial lining. And then they send that off to a lab and they take maybe three or four little pieces. I think it's gonna be painful. I'll let you know, cause um, I, will, um, I will vlog that process. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing that. I'm not excited about it. I know it's essential, but I'm not excited. Anyway, I wanna talk about advocacy for a minute because I'm in the middle of this bleed. I, it's been 75 days. My, my brain is doing um, 
sorry, and my brain is doing weird things. So I feel a little bit of anxiety. Um, I've been really, really processing everything and trying to um, get a grip on um, if what the emotions, if there's past experiences and past memories and things that are kind of in my body that need to have discussion, that need to come out. Um, and that this is just a representation of that. I'm looking at that. I'm, I'm really searching through things. And so, but I'm also scared. It's been 75 days and I'm thinking this cannot be right. This is so brutal. So, um, I talked to my doctor and doctors can be hard to talk to. They can be hard to talk to because I don't feel like they're warm and fuzzy. I don't feel like there's this, um, I'm here for you. I appreciate you as a woman. I appreciate you that you are in this mess. Oftentimes there's this way that, um, especially just in my experience that, um, doctors come across as, and it's a little bit emotionless. And I think it's because they deal with people all the time and their problems and their reactions and their anxieties and their hyper sensitivity and all of those things. So, and they're trying to manage them. So I was talking to her this morning and I said, yeah, you know, my brain's just kind of gone crazy a little bit. I'm just thinking about the worst things that could happen. And she said, you know what? I can't panic on your behalf. And I was like, right, <laughs> I need you to be an oak tree and solid and big and strong and solid in what you know. I can panic, but I don't want her to panic because then we're going to make a mistake. And so we had a good laugh about that and a good conversation. And she said, here's what I want you to do. Um, we went through options. Now, she suggested to me, look, I'm, I'm going to give you a... Um, a uh, progesterone IUD that's got progesterone inside of it and you will never have your period again. And I said, no, I want my period. Even though I've been bleeding at that time, it was 55 days. I know it sounds crazy, but I still like actually want my period. I want it to flow. I want it to feel. I want to use that feminine process. So is there anything else? And she said, there is. I give you a low dose progesterone um, IUD. And I said, okay. So I went to the uh, pharmacy and they want $400, which totally fine by me. I'll, I'll pay that to, to do this work. Um, and then I came home and I kind of sat with it. Um, I sat with not it, the IUD, but I sat with the idea of it. And my body was like, I, I don't think I want anything in there. My, every time I thought about it, my body went, don't just let us get our crap together before you start shoving stuff in there. And I thought, okay. So on our call this morning, I said, listen, it's not feeling right. And she said, all right, then how about, I said, do you have maybe like a, a, a low a progesterone pill that I could take? And she said, I do. So she gave me a, a pill, it's called um, the Zan. And this is um, just a, it's a constant, um, a continuous progesterone pill because I gotta stop this bleeding. And the thing is you have to contain this irregularity because we have to figure this out. I'm still going for my biopsy tomorrow, but I have to contain this. Um, and so that's kind of the nutshell. And the part about the advocacy that I wanted to mention, because this is the real start of this whole process, is that, you know, when a doctor comes and says, hey, you know, what can I do for you? Uh, why are you here? Sometimes we lose ourselves a little bit. Sometimes we lose our, um, our logic and we lose the way we maybe would talk to our spouse or our friend. We'd be like, I'm going to say, and this is what I want. And so I'm going to advocate for. And then you get there and you're like, whatever you want, whatever you can give me. Thank you. I don't want to bother you. Some of us are like that. And I just wanted to say that if there's anything that I've learned, when you choose yourself, you advocate for you. 
the doctor isn't going to know exactly what to give you unless you ask. So there's questions that I asked about this. I said, okay, and as soon as I said, I thank you very much for offering me a pill that will, a uh, uh, IUD that will never ever give me my, pill, my period again. I actually don't want that. She was very workable. Oh, okay. Well, here's the next thing. And then gave me a prescription to fill for that. And I didn't fill it, but I thought about it. And that's what I want to say to you um, as we start out this little series, which is, you must use your logic, but you also must feel. You must use your logic and intellect and the wisdom that medical um, medicine is offering us, but you also must use your body wisdom. And it goes hand in hand. And plus, I'm also using a naturopath. So I've got, you know, medicine over here, uh, me in the middle, and my body in the middle, and all of my life experiences all there. And I also have a naturopathic uh, doctor that is assisting me. And I use those three things to help me move down this line. So for all of you out there, um, this is a work in progress. I, I go tomorrow, I will tell you how it was. Amberly is going to take me to um, the doctor's office and I'm gonna have that um, endometrial biopsy and Lord have mercy, I think it's gonna hurt, but I'm already bleeding, so my cervix is already open, so perhaps it won't hurt as much, but I know it needs to happen. So again, body wisdom, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, yep, that feels right. Um, what doesn't feel right is the IUD. So I find that just really interesting. And uh, I cannot, um, well, I don't, I'm not really excited to explore this, actually, to be really honest. <laughs> but I do think it's part of my process. And I do think it's essential because, you know, um, my experiences can be your experiences. So the, the things to look for for these IGTV is um, to talk about body awareness and what um, my process on that, that the body does speak. It does have a way of showing that there is something wrong and alerting us and warning us. And we need to ask. And instead of, you know, getting anxious, uh, move to a place that says, okay, hold on and sit in quietness and just say, what is it that you want to say? Sometimes it works. And then the second piece of that is um, healthy eating, how you can eat and, and, and use uh, vegetables and supplements to, to make things work for you um, and to keep the health of your body, organics and all those kinds of things. And of course, there's a spiritual pers um, perspective, um, but there's also this other perspective that I'm really interested in talking to you all about, which is the idea and the uh, concept of self-care, which I haven't been good at. I honestly have to tell you that um, I gotta be either thrown up violently, uh, gotta be bleeding violently, or exhausted and I cannot see in order for um, the universe to get my attention. And uh, I'm bleeding. 75 days and the universe had my attention at about day 15 and so a lot of cool things have been coming out of this that I'd like to share with you so thank you so much for listening and you can stay tuned because we're gonna um I will walk this through with you um, um it's great information and I know there are many women out there who have a regular bleeding and it feels like your body is rejecting itself it feels like the body is rejecting the uterus it feels like there's a um, something going on and I, I get it. I know what you're saying and I know what you're feeling. And I know when the brain jumps to immediately, um, different things and different fear-based things. I'm there. I've been there. Um, but I also know what positivity and gratitude and joy feels like and can be like, and I know how to interact with my body. And I want to talk to you about that too. So you know what? Um, 
this is a journey. Life is a journey. And you know what? They call it irregular bleeding because you never know when it's going to come. And you know what? You never know when it's going to go away. And also, control. I have not been that kind of person that has ever had something to them that they can't really control. And so hand me bleeding for 75 days and I'm like doing everything I can to control it and it's not stopping. Uh, that's an interesting perspective as well. So stay tuned. Um, the story is not over yet. And um, the vulnerability and um, the conversation has just begun. Enjoy your day.